Some of you have been wondering where we're living now and what's this bus we keep talking about. This is our 1994 Bluebird All-American School Bus that we converted into a tiny house. Let's take you on a tour. Let's start by taking a walk around the outside of the bus. This is the outside of the bus. <laughs> Inside this compartment is our gray tank. We have a 50 gallon gray tank and a 50 gallon black tank. We have our gray tank that goes perpendicular to the bus that comes out here to our outlet drain. And then above it is the three inch line coming from our black tank. The rest of the under storage on this side is clear to store bus tools, bus parts, whatever we want to store in there. Now let's come around to the back of the bus and we'll take a look at the engine. This is a 1994 Bluebird All-American Pusher. So Pusher means that it's got the diesel engine in the back. It has a 5.9 Cummins with an Allison transmission behind it. Pretty bulletproof, no electronic controls, so it's easy to work on. In the back, we have an auxiliary radiator. The bus isn't overweight, but it's pretty heavy and uh, does heat up at times. We also have our generator platform here. Typically, we'll have our little suitcase sized generator sitting here. So continuing on with the under storage, on this side, we have our two propane tanks plenty of storage space for when we pick up all of our blocks and leveling jacks. And then on this back side, we have this pull out drawer that we can fill with whatever we want. Most of the time we put our firewood for the wood stove in it when we're traveling. When we got this bus, we knew that we wanted to have a passenger seat. So to get a passenger seat, we took out the standard bus door we used our first step of a normal school bus entry to set our mini split exterior unit. And then we had to move the door down here. Let's go inside.
So now that we've lived in the bus for two years full time, we can tell you that most of the things that we did have been working out wonderfully. Uh, but some of the things we might have done a little bit differently. Probably the biggest thing that we ran into was storage. You definitely need a lot different amount of clothing for a weekend trip versus living in the bus full time. So one of the things we did right off the bat was we took out one of the bunk beds and made a chest of drawers. So because the bus is not straight or plumb, nothing's level, Amy and I chose to custom make all of our cabinetry. So we could have got off the shelf cabinets and tried to make them fit, but those just really aren't meant to travel down bumpy roads full of silverware. So we built all of our drawers out of three quarter inch plywood so that they could hold up to the rough conditions of the road. One thing that we really enjoy is having a full size garbage can. We use some of our extra butcher block countertop to make a pull out cutting board, comes in handy. And then we had to have a junk drawer. So all this would have been somewhere. And so at least we have it contained to the drawer. One of the things that Amy and I went back and forth on is whether we put a wood stove in the bus. And that is probably our best decision that we made apart from raising the roof. Uh, the tiny wood stove is perfect to heat the bus. Doesn't really cause a lot of mess and it was a lifesaver with our four season living. Not only did Amy and I have to figure out how to live in less than 300 square feet, uh, we have two cats living with us. So they got to find out how to live in 300 square feet as well. So that's why you see the cat tree and we built this little box to hide the litter box. So they've got a little door and it opens up. they have their needs as well. One thing that we almost didn't think of was where do we put a broom? We uh, hadn't planned on building a bunch of tall closets. And so this one came to be our utility closet where we have all of our, you know, small things like that. And we've got a place to hang the broom. We had a travel trailer before building the bus. And one thing that I hated, especially about that, was how small the shower was. So that was one of the things on our list to build in the bus is a real size shower. Uh, but we didn't want it to always be taking up so much space. So we decided to go with a curbless shower, which has been working perfectly. We never have any issues with the draining because we always level the bus uh, wherever we park it. So curbless shower, the curved curtain rod, and Plenty of head for height for my six foot two frame. We decided to do a Jack and Jill style bathroom where you have a door on each side instead of kind of the hallway style that we've seen on some schoolies. Some schoolies have a hallway with two separate doors or two separate rooms, a shower room and a toilet room. And we like this feel. This bathroom is about seven and a half by five foot and it suits us perfectly. Did we go with a composting toilet? And the answer is no. We decided to go ahead and do an RV style toilet that dumps into a black tank. That was some challenging plumbing and layout uh, because it needs to drop directly into the black tank. You can't have a bunch of plumbing just because there's not a lot of water with every flush, which is good. Um, if I can convince Amy and we were to do it again, we'd probably go with a composting toilet. Uh, it has its downsides to do an RV toilet. And I think a composting toilet probably in the long run would have been better. The master bedroom. Uh, we're able to fit a queen size bed in here. Sometimes Amy decorates it to make it look like the headboard's over here, but the headboard's over here. Very comfortable, suits us just fine. What we don't like about it is that I usually sleep on the edge Amy needs to get out of bed. She's got to climb over me. And it's hard to make. And it's hard to make. But that's schooly. <laughs> Beds are hard to make. Um, if we were to do the master bedroom differently, I think we would have pushed the bathroom in a little bit more and turned the, high, turned the queen size bed so the headboard was towards the back window. That way we'd have some walking area on either side of the bed.
In a schoolie, storage is a premium. We didn't want to use every little tiny space because sometimes that's not very usable, but under the bed is space we wanted to use. Under the bed, we have our 100 gallon freshwater tank and a little bit of storage. Let me show you what we have. So in order to do all the plumbing for the shower and the toilet and avoid the wheel wells in the back here, we went ahead and raised the floor 12 inches. That also allowed us to store our batteries under the floor. Under the floor, we have six 100 amp hour AGM batteries. Under the floor also, we have our water drain, our tank to pump valve, and then we also have a line that we can winterize the bus with RV antifreeze if we needed to. So inside this wall, which is underneath the shower bench, is our power distribution center. We have our 110 volt and our 12 volt distribution center. The heart of our power system is our Victron MultiPlus 3000 12 volt system. We decided to do a 110 volt apartment size refrigerator. And it's worked really well. We routed all of our systems to this command center. So from here, we have our diesel heater control. We have our manual transfer switch. We have our Victron control panel. We have our Victron shunt. And we have our sea level tank level indicator, which has black water, gray water, fresh water, and battery life. We are on pressurized water source right now, but at the flip of a switch or when it's frozen outside, we can switch to the onboard pump and our 100 gallon water tank. We also have our tankless hot water heater control panel here where we can set the temperature for that. With our manual transfer switch, we have three modes. We have our 15 amp generator mode. We have our battery only mode. And then we also have a 30 amp shoreline connection. So you can see here on battery mode, the grid isn't showing any input. We're bringing in almost 200 watts of solar, which is charging our battery as well as running our 150 watts of AC load. We like being comfortable. So in the bus, it might've been overkill, but we put in two Pioneer 12,000 BTU mini split heat pump air conditioners. One here in the front and one here in the back. So in planning our bus, we knew we wanted to have rooftop access and we've seen a number of different ways to do it. Some people build ladders or have a portable ladder that they can get up from the side. Some people just pop up the emergency exit hatch and then they've got a ladder that they have to stow to get up through that hatch and none of that really seemed very easy or comfortable or something you could carry food or drinks up to the roof so we opted for a method of getting to our roof that we haven't seen in any other buses and it is an attic ladder so we put in this attic ladder and then we custom built the hatch for getting up to the roof. Let's go check out the roof. Welcome to our rooftop deck. This is an eight by 16 foot cedar deck accessed through our roof hatch. Also coming up through the deck is the chimney for our tiny wood stove. Warm our hands up here while we're up here in the winter. Uh, so this piece has to come off when we drive and then we've got a driving cap that goes on as well. Also up here on the roof, we have 1200 watts of solar.
So that concludes the tour of our tiny house on wheels. Remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like. Let us know what you think. Hi everyone, I'm doing B-rolls. This is Jeremiah. He's dead. He's been dead for a while. <laughs> and, um... Check with your magnets. <laughs> Here's Gerald. He's also been dead for a while. We found him on the bus. Um, he's my favorite. Look at him. He's a cutie. I will, I will kill you in your sleep. Who? I will kill you in your sleep. Hey. Who cares? <laughs> oh, I'm still filming. <laughs> This is my pet bee. It's pretty, it's pretty cute. I'm not gonna lie, you know. <laughs> I dropped it.